Okay guys, well, I tried to uh, do this last night. I'm gonna throw that clip out because it didn't turn out very well. It was too dark. So what I did is I took our kidding pins and I stood them on end so they didn't come out in the trailer so far. This is a six foot eight inch trailer. Um, so I stood those up on end and then their gates I used as normal. Went to Menards, got some new kennel clamps. For now, those are just zip tied in a few places. Um, I really didn't at the time, short notice, find the right U-bolts to go through there to hook them. Um, I don't know what we'll do there long term, but these didn't turn out too too bad. Um, I do have them at a little bit of an angle, but this one's a double pin. But we've got the three girls and then the one boy in here. He's young enough that we shouldn't have too much of an issue, but eventually we'll have to split this, split this up and give him his own. So we have to bring, I didn't clean the nose out, we have to bring our own shavings to, I think it's a little Sioux Showdown, I think it's called. It's in Afton, Iowa. Bring our own shavings. So I brought, uh, I, I'm going to figure two bags of shavings per pin. We'll have three pins, the little girls, the boy, and then Spitfire will get her on. So I'm figuring two bags. I brought a couple extra. Um, I've got three hay feeders. I've got grain. Um, I've got, I don't have the grain buckets. i got to go in the shed and get those. So it's a good thing I'm telling you this. Brought a couple feed bags full of hay. I got new plastic buckets with bucket straps because it depends on what you're hanging on. Um, will depend on what you, uh, how you hang stuff, secure it. Um, I need to do something with those. I usually have a couple chunks of chain. So we have everybody bedded down. We have that stuff. And then back here, um, just, hey, I need those feed buckets next to the bale of hay in the shed. Um, so I've just got some essential fluids for the pickup. She has an old truck. Um, we picked up this little weaver, it's a little head stall piece that uh, just goes to a fence. I figure I'll bring it with us. This is the spare tack box, it's just big bulk storage. Show you what we got in there. Just extras of sprays. Got the blower in that one. Got our extension cord. I'll take these halters, I'll throw them in the main box. The main the floor is not level, and this sits at an angle. So we've got all of our multiple tools of chains. We've got our Weaver Total Controls. We've got our different prong, or spiked collars. We've got some smooth ones. Um, we've got our um, Andis Clipper Care. We've got our Pro Pink. We've got conditioner, um, clean chain, or whatever in the heck it's called. Yeah. In there, just for basics, we've got our hose and a bucket for washing. Um, in here, I've got my bill of sale, but registration book health papers make sure you have that hoof boss clippers the ginormous thousand count pack of uh, zip ties we've got our pack here we've got our foaming shampoo we've got our foamer we've got our fogger we've got another brush we've got our other little weaver scrubber i've got um clipper dip um hair so that's what's in there here i got some chamois i've got our extra halters got all of our brushes We've got little chains to hook things, a little, couple different screwdrivers, um, scissors. We've got wet wipes to wipe the goats off. We've got an extra blower in. Um, I'm doing this in a hurry. we got to get going. Um, we've got these extra clips to narrow things up. I've got extra snap clips should we need to hang something. Um, De-shedding comb. This time of year, make sure you have one of those. So I'm going to shove this stuff in here. Um, and then... Up in the truck, I have my Milwaukee radio. I have, um, have my Milwaukee radio. I have a Milwaukee light in case we need some extra light. Um, I keep a padlock for this box so we can padlock it while it's left in the arena. I've got chains and padlocks to lock these doors up. Um, two wheel dolly to put that show box on that. I've got ratchet straps in the pickup and I'll strap it on here. Uh, that's the quick nitty gritty of what we got with us. We also, uh, Shane is going to bring a couple of very basic um, medications. Are you going to throw it in the front one? We're just going to bring these clip on feeders for now. Like I said, every time you go to a show, we've never been here before, we don't know how we're going to secure things. So um, we may have to improvise something here. I may, they may be down along the ground, I may have to zip tie them. Um, what we may do, and I've seen people do in the past, you take a chunk of cattle panel, cut a two or three foot chunk of cattle panel, zip tie it, especially if some of these 
arenas have vertical bar pins. You zip tie your cattle panel to those bars and then you can clip all that stuff on it as you normally would. So I was not prepared for that. We'll have to uh, do something. But anyway, it's uh, after three o'clock and we've got like a good two and a half hour drive to Afton, Iowa. So we need to get on the horse. Why it should be coming. We've got us a Code Red Mountain Dew and some Popcorners chips produced by one of our farmers here locally. So pick you some of those up for a snack. We'll get on the road. All right, guys. Well, about three hours later, we made it. Uh, hundred some miles, um, but we had to stop for fuel and stop for potty break. So, anyway, we made it here. Um, time to unload. We've got to this place. We provide our own shavings, so I got to run in and um, get uh, get our pins set up. I forgot the trimming stand, and so Shana. Shana had to bring the trimming stand. She's a couple hours behind us. So anyway, I'm gonna get unloaded and Get the goats inside Okay guys, well we made it. We're at the Little Sioux Showdown in Afton, Iowa um, Check-in is till 8 o'clock tonight. They're building some more pins um, We've got five goats to wash and I'm sweating like crazy and we forgot the fitting stand um, good thing Shana was still home and she was leaving about two, two and a half hours behind us. So it'll be here soon. We do have a little weaver uh, stand that clamps on these bars. So that'll be good. But nope, it's definitely some good goats. Maybe we, uh, here in a little bit, we'll have a chance to go around. I need to trim some hooves. We're going to wash Spitfire here and uh, get her. They're kind of worked up. We gave them, we gave them some hay and we'll get them some grain. They've had water. But uh, we'll, get them we'll get them cleaned up. When Shannon gets here, maybe she'll do some clipping on them. Be ready for the morning. Spitfire needed a lot of clipping, and I used the resetting comb and got rid of all of it. It is 9:30 at night, and these are the sights and sounds of the barn yet. If you had a first or second place in the previous classes, please be ringside for the division drive. We will do the ABGA division drive first, followed by the JABGA division drive.
this goat right here okay. is a lot for the top prospect sale. It'll be sold under Food Berry Farms. As we have bring our class members back to this division, it's really nice to see all the volley that we bring back. You know, we start with the zero to three, really comparable nose. There's just some structural things that separate it. The ones that have a lot of femininity and a lot of muscle, we can level them out over that top a little bit more. And we move down to the three to six class. You know, I think there's those that really went around the ring free of movement, really up front end and really balanced and they have enough muscle for this age. 
really attractive nose for just being three to six months old. Then we move up to the bigger classes. We start to put some weight on the character. You know, the differences between those two. The red one is the breed character, but the really unique one really has a lot of power in it. And we follow up with the older class, really unique individuals, all fulfillment now. You know, you really appreciate the power she has. She's just not a pretty, a pretty doe. She's got everything back in that, back in that rib cage and all the way down through that loin. We'll go ahead and use our go on the end for our champion division. As we uh, move our second place one over, it's a little closer. I think there's really two comparable ones. I think there's one that's a little bit more unique in her makeup, a little bit more cleaner in that front end. The devil in the third bowl will be ever reserved. Congratulations. Hey, wink one. Wink one? Yeah. Who's wink? Our oh. goat. Oh, our goat? Yeah. Hey, did wink one do a wink? Mm-hmm. Wink one do a wink. 
you gotta remember that he's the oldest in the class, right? And so then when he moves up to the next class, he'll be young, and so he'll probably be towards the bottom. That's what happens when they get older. Yeah. So you do better when they're the older in the class, and then when they're the younger in the class, they're gonna do quite as good. As we uh, start our cup show, um, there's really an individual that's grown well, really developed, you know, is really up front and really powerful, really has a nice big forearm that shows that muscling all the way through. And when you handle it down his top, he really square made. It really carries that muscle all the way back to that back leg. We just, we just move his tail hand up a little bit, make him a little prettier from the profile, but still a very excellent buff. The buff with the spot on his back. The next one that really has a lot of muscle. As we move, there are nine, twelve well, uh, I think two individuals, a very comparable, I think the one that's going to lead off the head, the darker headed one, a little bit more rugged made, a little bit more power in that forearm, has a little bit more hard, hardness because of that muscle over that rib, and really holds it together, and carries that muscle all the way back to the rump compared to the other one. The one in second place. As we uh, bring our box back for our junior drive, I think we have some that really excel. You know, they have that brief character in their head. I think they have, they have the functionality and the structural correctness. But I think there's some things we need to add to quite a few of these. We need to add a lot more natural heart muscle to them. We're really lacking that out here today. But I think there's one that really, really holds it together a little bit better. You know, I think one that's probably a little bit more on game for me and it's really a little bit more mature and a little bit more rugged for me today. And I'll go out and select your champion reserve.
as we uh, move our second place one over to the one that really got a lot of frame, a lot of homework about him, and I think we need to really get down to it, the ones that are going to pass on the product, you know, and really pass on the structure crack and really add that extra muscle and power to our next generation. And I think there's only a few of them out here that can do that, and we need to strive to change some of these. When you go to choose a herd sire, you're going to put a lot of animals on the ground out of certain pups, so you, you want to be pretty particular on which pups you use. So if you have a certain problem you need to fix, well, you may sacrifice something on the other end, so just take that in, in mind. I'll go out and select your reserve champion. Please give them a nice round of applause and bring them up. As we uh, look into our overall champion, I think there's five things we can really utilize in the industry. I think we could use a little bit more breed character about these pups' head, you know, give them a little bit more room in it, make sure those horns are going right, right, right there, and if they curve right down to the ground, you know, and see that beautiful head. The bucks can have those nice heads too. You know, we don't have to have horns going every which way. But with that said, I think this buck really square made over right between the rib shape and right behind the shoulders. Really square made all the way back to that hip, hip and bone junction all the way back to that front bearing. You know, and then we follow the, the other yearling buck is very similar. Not high, he really balances up well. You know, we can power him up in certain areas, but still a very unique buck. And the buck coming in second out of that class. He did buck in his own right. We just need to fix a little bit on that leg and chew. And the younger buck, you really appreciate the usefulness of it. He's going to be a rugged, well-grown buck. Really shows a nice profile and, and a nice design to him with the structural practice. We'll go ahead and use this buck right here for our champion. Congratulations. As we bring our second place one, it gets a little bit closer for me for our reserve. You know, I think there's a little bit more give and take here. I, you know, and I think the breed character in the head, you know, and the design, I think the younger of us will still be our reserve. Congratulations. Yes. Yay.
classes box that we have here. Uh, I'll tell you what, if somebody wants to flip flop these top three, uh, you're not going to get a lot of argument out of me. Uh, you can defend it about any way you want to go. This little red guy, though, that comes to the top, uh, you got to admire him. He, uh, he's, he's got a wonderful top line in him whenever you put your hands over that rack and over that loin. Uh, it, it's, it's the same width. Uh, whenever we're looking for bucks at home for our personal use or whenever we're breeding bucks uh, that's going to go to the breeding pen, that's the first thing that I look at. I want my bucks to be just as wide the rack as what they are at the point. Uh, this guy already has some uh, forearm to him, but he's got a lot of extension in that front end. But yet he has some design, he's got some muscle, he's got some definition to that muscle. He'll be an interesting one to see how he grows up. Uh, this next little paint buck, not a lot of difference, they look a lot alike. Uh, he gives up just a little bit over that uh, rack compared to the solid red kid or the, the white legged kid, but too, he's got some definition there. I definitely see some formation already in that forearm. I love the extension in the front end. Both of those bucks are going to be cool ones to kind of watch mature and see what they grow into. When you get down to these last three, they just need to bulk up a little bit. Bucks are funny. Uh, in that zero to three, three to six, they just go through stages and uh, you can look at them one day and think, oh my gosh, I hate you. Then you can look at them three days later and you think, oh man, you look good. So these bug kids, just, they change really quick. So uh, just keep working at it, keep going with them, keep them on feet. They're all going to be pretty nice here one of these days. Congratulations. Once we get the girls and, and uh, Link back in their pens for the night, we will, uh, I'll do a little recap on how the day went. I think there was somebody, I don't have Facebook, but I just look up publicly our page, what Shana posts, just to keep up with like comments and stuff like that. I think it was Scott Jones commented. All right, Scott, and anybody else. So just the other day, we bought this trailer. Um, we bought this trailer for $4,700. Okay, it is a two, well, it's listed 2006, but it's titled as a 2007 Featherlight. And even though it looks aluminum, guys, it is a steel trailer. It's just spray, well, I shouldn't say spray painted. It's painted in aluminum silver. And it's, trust me, even today with some of the Iowa people we know, uh, they thought it was aluminum. So, no, it is not. So. Guys, these are Master Paws dog kennel panels from Menards. So Master Paws is a Menards brand. Um, really, you could do almost any brand. Um, we use these for kitting. So these were just some that I snatched out of the stack. So traditionally, they are, let's use this for a good example. I'll move my light to help. Maybe. So... Scott, what we've got is we've got a four foot tall, five foot long panel. That's what all these are. And so this is my gate. So I'm sorry guys, I'm working with limited room here. Um, so anyway, I have to obviously have the gate set horizontal. And as you can see here, this is these plugins are normally where you would set them vertically and clip them together. But what I did is for under $3, you can go to Menards and get a standard kennel, dog kennel clamp right there. So it just takes a 9 16 to tighten those down. So one pack has two of those in it. Okay, so I've got one on each corner. And then obviously I just stuck a panel in between. I've got one here. And for all the little ones, I made a double. So um, since I'm just attached to the wall, um, I can make it any width I wanted. So I used a gate panel at five foot and then I stood one up for another four foot essentially. Um, again, just kennel clamps on both ends. Now I did nothing fancy down here. As you can see right there, it's just zip tied. I knew these animals would not be rowdy enough to be beating on this. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is here again, I'll switch the light somewhere in here and down here. If I can find the right U bolt uh, at Menards or whatever, um, 
I'm going to try to find one that fits through there and is long enough to clamp that panel so I can secure it a little bit better. But for now, this works. Um, if I can get by my gate. I've got just enough. This is all my junk that's still up there, guys. Um, we didn't clean that out, but I've still probably got, I don't know, four foot of room up here. There's, that's just kind of the quick basics, Scott. If you need to know more, um, leave a comment um, somewhere. And I'll try to get this done in the day. But this is why I always like to add interior lights on my trailers more so than just that one little thing that came in here because I do everything in the dark. All right, well, um, let's, uh, let's talk about how things went. So this was a quick trip to Lil Sue's Showdown in Afton, Iowa. Um, went down Friday night, um, well actually Friday afternoon. Um, it's a good two and a half. Once we get into Iowa, we lose some highway speed down to 55. Um, so I want to say it's a, it's a good two and a half to three hours for us. Somewhere in there, if I remember right. It's not that far. Um, it's, shoot, it's maybe 130 some miles. Um, which with the old 454, that's over a tank of fuel. So yes, I had to stop 20 miles from the destination to top off with fuel because I didn't know if we'd make it. Um, so that's where we headed. Um, the turnout was good. Um, compared to last year where Nebraska, we had a lot of shows. I don't want to say we had a lot of shows. We had like four or five shows in the area. I think it was four. Um, something like that. And most of those shows are happening again. Plus, Boars on the Loop in Loop City, Nebraska is coming up. That's a new show for this year that's added. So I think that'll make five shows, ABGA shows here in Nebraska. So we're going to attend to... a. We're going to attempt to attend all of those. Um, so this one in Afton, Iowa was an addition. We just kind of wanted to see how our young animals stacked up, see what people in Iowa have. Just experience an Iowa show. Um, there's a few people from Iowa that like to come to Nebraska, hang out with all of us, show, um, and they make quite a few of these trips. Or they're also in a, a sale. So it's good to see them again. Uh, even if we don't all remember each other's names, we recognize each other. Um, so anyway, if you guys have not been to an ABGA show, and now this is just our second year, um, two years ago we showed a couple little commercial dolings, um, just locally, uh, at an open show, just to kind of get our feet wet. And so this is just our second year doing this, um, and so here's my, my take on this. So... If you're scared about showing, just go. Just grab some basics. Um, you know, we're not experts, but you know, we could maybe do what we take in our show box. Um, I don't know if I'll do this in this video. It's already gonna be too long. So maybe we'll just do that as a small 10 or 15 minute thing. Um, maybe not even that. So maybe we'll do a quick video on that. That way, if you wanna know maybe some of the basics to take, um, like I said, we're, we're not gonna be an end all be all expert on that, but we could toss some of that at you. Um, but go, because what happens is, so this was a, um, this was a two show in one day event. And then I say, I think tomorrow is more of a jackpot commercial um, market show. And so we weren't gonna stick around for that. Um, but a lot of times, a lot of your ABGA shows, they'll do, um, say three shows in two days, they'll do two shows, 8 a.m. and like a 2 p.m. show on Saturday, and then they'll do a show on Sunday with a commercial show to some extent, give or take, on Sunday afternoon. Um, what was different about this show is the JABGA, the juniors. They were kind of intermingled. Um, I won't go into how they do that, um, but they were. we showed together. They just wore a, an orange sticker on their sleeve. Um, so that way the judge could designate them separately from the regular ABGA, the seniors, I guess. Um, so that way if they placed fifth in the class, but they were the highest junior, the point structure was awarded differently. So um, I didn't ask for the details. I could probably assume, but we'll leave that out. So my Pyrenees is laying in a pen. Um, so anyway, 
what you'll do is you'll get a different judge for every show. So the way we did the first show is we had Spitfire, who was in the um, 16 to 20 month class. She was a single entry. There was a handful of goats in the 12 to 16, and usually, um, and like I said, this is the uh, percentage, because she's a 50%. Um, so she was a single entry in her class, and usually what you'll see, since people will go out and buy a high percentage buck or a full blood buck or something like that, maybe have a commercial doe, there are a lot in this area, Iowa, Nebraska, I, we haven't traveled anywhere else, tons of high quality percentage animals in these shows especially in that three to six going into six to nine month class that six to nine month class on some pure um excuse me some percentage does very strong competition you'll have 15 to 20 does in that class and it'll take a while to judge it but there's a they hit their stride like when your babies are young you know weekly basis um, they'll change. You'll know, hail to grow a spurt like a little goofy teenager, and then they'll fill in, and then they'll do it again. Six to nine months, they're they're really hitting their stride. So when you bump up from three to six to six to nine, be ready to get way out horsed. So there's a bunch of animals there. Spitfire was an only entry in the sixteen to twenty. So needless to say, two blue ribbons. <laughs> um, but hey, uh, single entry in the class. Uh, one to three animals, um, she'll receive one point for each each win, so that's always good. Usually, you've got to have quite a few animals in the class um, before second, third place, whatever the tier, uh, stair step will be awarded points. So, unless you're first, you're last in a lot of these classes. So, so that's what happened with Spitfire. She got first because she was the only animal in the class, uh, both shows. So uh, then she went into the drive, which would be the winners of all the age groups in that division. So they'll go everything from zero months to 12 months will be um, in a division. And then they'll jump from, um, then they'll do like 12 to 24 months will be in the division. And then 24 months plus will be in the division. So Spitfire uh, went to the drive for that middle division. And the other couple animals that were there, um, she needs, Physically, they had a stronger build than her, a little more square across the top. Um, a lot of times you got to watch because some judges will look for certain structure and some judges will look for basically who's been hitting the bucket the hardest. And that sometimes will throw you off at these shows. Sometimes a big old heavy doe will win because they just look better for a show. Uh, some of these big old beefy does in these classes at shows may never do anything with traditional breeding. They may all get AI'd. They, they're too heavy to come out to a pasture, we feel, to do natural breeding. So, um, we, well, that doesn't work. Um, we, uh, we never, we never leave our animals that heavy. So, anyway, I'm kind of combining a lot of things. So the first judge was a guy, um, I don't remember his name. Some people are very adamant about knowing their judges at these shows. I'm not as concerned because I can't put a different uniform on my goat and make them change their genetic package, how they're built. So to me, yeah, I may listen to how they're judging at the time, a couple classes ahead, and maybe you can set them a different way but they're either gonna like your animal or they're not gonna like your animal based on their preference or how they view a breed standard. So to me, the people that get worked up over that, hey, that's fine, but for me, it's it's whatever. Um, but we've seen this judge before. He judged in Nebraska, and then he after he judged one show, he showed his animals in the next two shows. Um, so he made his weekend well worth it. Um, and even from what I remember in that show of him judging us last year, he judged completely different this year. Um, very looking for very traditional structure in the animal. Um, beautiful Roman nose, swept back horn set, things like that. Um, the way they were muscled or skeleton. Um, he was looking, so for the first judge, he was looking at 
uh, face structure over who's just big and beefy and bulked up either because they are that way genetically or because they hit the bucket really hard. So Spitfire will throw her out because she was a single entry. When we move to our um, three to six month full blood, so that would be Rachel the Bottle Baby, that would be um, Twisted Sister, we call her Twisted Sister because she likes to alligator roll when she's tied up in training. Um, and then that would also be Irish Ice. Okay, well, here's our thing. Irish Ice, she got disqualified. We were pretty sure it would happen. She's got a great structure. We breed a one buck freak show to her mom, Rebar, as we call her. Uh, Dublin Delight from Travis Levings down at Rebar Ranch. That's a pair. We want that goat. The biggest problem is, if you watch ABGA standards, her pigment comes in very slowly. That was the same way that happened with Emmy last year. So, um, we took her, and we thankfully had some other Nebraska friends there, and they're all wonderful. Between Emmett and Tyler and Jamie, um, so that'd be Jamie Fugate of Fooberry Farms, that'd be Emmett Fanning of Fanning Farms, and Tyler Wolken. I believe that's how you say his last name. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, Tyler. Um, I don't know if he's got a farm name on the goat side. I believe he does some cattle stuff. Me not being on Facebook, I'm less informed than Shayna. So, Tyler, if you ever see this video, go ahead and speak up. Put your farm name down in the comments uh, for a shout-out. But anyway, they helped us out. Um, in this case, Jamie did not have a younger doe, so she took Rachel, I believe, because she was Rachel's the easiest. You always give... Don't be that person that takes the easy animal if you have one that's hard to, to walk. You take the tough animal. It's your crazy animal because you haven't worked with them enough. So we gave Jamie Rachel because she's the calmest um, or should have been. Um, I took Twisted Sister and Shana took Ice. And so as the judge came across and he was looking at them, he did DQ uh, Irish Ice. As we suspected, it was going to be she made the three to six month class by two days. Her birthday is on the 9th. The zero to three month uh, date was the 11th. And so she placed up uh, or classed up. And you might have got a little more leeway in a zero to three class with your pigment. It was something we were willing to risk. So we did end up scratching her for a second show. So uh, Jamie took her um, back for us. And then me and Shana continued on with Rachel and um, Twisted Sister. So Twisted Sister is a little beefier, a little more on the bucket. Big old square top. Um, and then once you get to Rachel, she's a little leaner, but she's very defined and muscular. So based on... Um, hold on, my arm's getting tired. Based on what that first judge was looking for... Um, Shayna ended up placing second with um, Rachel, and I placed third with Twisted Sister. So we thought, hey, great, you know, you, you always wonder where your animals are going to fall. And so we have second and third, and then what happens is then Rachel with Shayna, they got to go into that division drive. And so we went into the division drive. So that was cool. I'm hoping, I'll, I don't think we placed anything there. We just made the drive. Um, if I'm missing something, I guess, uh, I don't know. We'll worry about that later. I see why it has come back out of the house. It's been a long trip. They, they all took a, almost a three hour nap on the way home. Anyway, so that's how we placed those two in that class. Great, right? You know, that's what you hope for. Um, we didn't, while we were busy with our animals, we didn't see how everybody else was doing with theirs. Um, I hope they had good, good success. Um, I know we did, we saw a little bit more of Emmett's because we had some animals that were very similarly aged. Um, and Tyler was helping Emmett show an extra animal. And so, um, next we moved into, uh, full blood bucks. And so we had, uh, Lucky M, the missing link, which would have been from... I don't know what you want to call her. We've talked about it before. It was a cowboy classic doe. Um, we call her Sunny Sparkles or something like that. Um, we picked her up. She's the one that's got the crooked nose. Um, you would not guess that she probably would have thrown one of the best kids on the farm. Um, but anyway, so the missing link, he is the oldest 
in the zero to three class. He will place out, he will class out of that very soon. We, Shana showed the missing link in zero to three. Um, there was, uh, there was a little tiny guy, like just a few weeks old, uh, Chester, God, what did she call him? Chester, some, like Chester Cheetos, something like that. There was, there's three, whatever his, uh, full name is, uh, Chester Cheetos. She likes to eat Cheetos. You'll see him, cute little thing. Um, he was the youngest, we were the oldest. But anyway, based on what that first judge was looking for structure, um, even though the link, we would, I would love to see him filled out a little more. I think he's hit a stride, um, another little growth spurt. He's on creep, like all these boys are, full feed, um, or basically full feed. And um, he lacked a little bit there. So he ended up... I, and I'll put the video in, or you probably just saw it. Um, he ended up getting picked first in the class. So, you know, that was always good. Because there was a couple others in the class. Emmett's two young ones were really nice little young young bucks. Um, didn't get the look that they probably should have. Um, and then there was another couple bucks in the first show um, that were also very similar as a spectator, standing back, you know, not up in front of him. And so um, we came out of that, and then we went to the division drive, okay? So now we got, let's see, everything's up in the pickup. We got reserve uh, champion in the division, because uh, I think you got two of those. So reserve champion in the division, Right, so that's everybody from zero months to 12 months. He got second best out of all of them. Now we move to um, the overall division. So you take that first division, the middle division, and the senior division. Um, the older we got, the less bucks that were there. So it was very heavy in the younger ones. So now we're at the grand drive. I think that's what you call it. So basically it's the first and second place of all three of those divisions. And this is where a fellow Nebraskan, uh, Emmett from Fanning Farms, comes in with his very nice young buck. And I want to say he's, yeah, we were in the same division, I think. Yeah. The young, I don't know, whatever. You'll probably see it. But uh, Emmett ended up winning grand overall buck. And Link came through and won um, as a zero to three, which, guys, you have to... You have to have a judge that's looking for future potential, frame, things like that, outside of just a big bulky fill on top of a really good genetic structure, right? So this judge and what he was looking for in his specific style saw something in Link uh, that he, again, behind Emmett, took reserve grand overall buck. So uh, he ended up in this one show walking away with a blue ribbon. Uh, a rosette for reserve grand in the division and reserve grand overall. So that was great. So that was first show. Now, I know we're getting lengthy here again, um, but now we're going to switch it up. Show two, two o'clock. Here's what can happen, guys. We knew if he had a certain style, there's a very good likelihood that judge number two is going to look at something completely different. So if you come in, unless you've got a very awesome animal that nobody can deny, you could swing a class drastically. If you're in the middle, you might swing in the middle, move up a few, move down a few. If you're at the top, based on something specific, like, you know, whatever, you could end up down in the middle, or they could flip it, right? So we decided, as I said, same scenario with uh, Spitfire. You know, like I said, she got her two blues. That was it. Um, we scratched ice, like I said, because of her pigment. And then um, what we did is we just showed the other two. Okay, now, like I said, Rachel got second. Twisted Sister got third. Me and Shana were each showing our respective does again. And Shana got like eighth, and I got fifth. Uh, so, so mine dropped two more spots and Shana went from second to eighth, right? 
Uh, so there's a difference in style of the judge. So never count yourself out because you just all you got to do is switch that judge. You've got between two and three chances, different styles of chances in a weekend usually. There's a couple. There's a show we have here in Nebraska that's four shows in two days. Um, so you've got four judges. So anyway, totally swung that. It's like, well, I guess no drives. We'll just take them back to the pen, get them ready to load on the trailer. Um, Link came up, and I think Link got, I think a yellow. So I think he got fifth. So we went from Link getting blue, reserve grand, reserve overall, to fifth in his class. So guys, never count on anything. Um, you know, like I said, you can't change the animal once you're there. And that's what's funny is, yeah, you can try to change something in the future with your breeding program. But what's always interesting, I like to hear the reasons that the judges give on why they chose your animal in this position they've placed them in and uh, what they'd like to change about them. The problem is that goat's what it is. <laughs> um, you can try to breed the same two animals next year and it'll change drastically. So anyway, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed our little trip to Afton, Iowa for the Little Sioux Showdown. Um, I know this video is a little lengthy, and I'm guessing I probably got two of you to watch most of it. So anyway, uh, we appreciate you tuning in. If you would uh, like, give us a thumbs up uh, and subscribe, and uh, leave a comment down at the, down below, and uh, let me know um, what you thought of this and how would you, what else you would like to see in the future at one of these shows. Um, I would like to do a little more. We feel kind of corny putting our phone or something on a tripod while we're clipping and cleaning and stuff like that, you know, because I'm sure most of these people are like, what are you doing? Um, but, you know, if you guys would like to see that, um, maybe we'll get you a little more behind the scenes um, at some future shows. So we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.